guys, welcome to today's video. Today is my second Halloween tutorial and I decided to do a zombie pop art look. I kind of decided to draw it out first, which I never normally do. So I made this little face chart and then this is what I created. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, I was kind of getting a bit bored doing it, so I did kind of rush some parts. And sorry, everything isn't filmed, but it was a very long video otherwise. But if you want to see how I created this look, then please continue. So I'm just going to show you the reference picture that I drew, it looks like this. So for me I'm going to have this side on my blue hair side and this side on my pink hair side just so the colours kind of work and I've done it kind of tried to do it opposite of both opposite sides um, ish. So we'll see how that goes. So to start mapping everything out I'm going to be taking a brown liner and as you can see if you make any mistakes you can literally rub it off because there's nothing else on my face. You want to first divide this section divide the brain the eyes and nose and all the mouthpieces of course i went with the reference picture that i drew out and if you do struggle you can find this on my instagram which i'll link below as all and yeah this just gives you a, a guide to work from so we're going to be working on the pop art side first and i'm going to be blanking out the area making it flawless with a foundation in this video i will describe the products but i won't give you the actual literal product names i'll do that all in the description just to make it easier for me to explain I'm just applying it with my finger for quickness and precision. So I'm going to be taking an eye base called Soft Ochre, which is my favourite and I use in every single video. Just applying that to my area to give me a nice base for my shadows to stick to. Because this is a fairly normalish side and you will be putting eyeshadow there. To set that area, I'm going to be taking medium mineralized skin finish by MAC, my favourite setting powder. Just to give us something for the eyeshadows to really nicely blend on and be fabulous and perfect. And smooth. And gorgeous. I'm going to be taking that same pencil and sketch out my cut crease shape. This is how I used to do cut creases. And I thought, my why not kind of sketch out this too? Because I sketched out the rest of my face. From this next palette, I'm going to be taking this warmish brown tone. And on a fluffy brush, just buffing that over that line. Not being too careful if it's, you know, above the line or below the line. Because we'll be cleaning everything up anyway. You just want to create kind of a natural shadow in that crease. Boom. With a slightly deeper matte brown. I'm going to be taking this on a smaller brush and kind of glowing a little bit closer and deeper into that line. Again, it doesn't matter too much if you've overlapped the line, but try and keep it above so you have less to kind of clean up in a way. That's why I'm using a smaller brush to really get the detail and precision with it. Next, I'm going to be taking a shimmery pink and applying that in my inner corner and my brow bone as a highlight. I want it to have that slight pink tinge just because we will be applying a pink eyeshadow and you want it to complement everything. And then I'm going to be using the soft ochre again. You can use concealer if you want. And a flat brush and really carving out that shape. Next I'm going to be setting that with a matte neon pink. Because with a pop of zombie, pop out zombie, you want it to kind of be a bit neon and bright and colourful. Next I'm going to be taking a gel liner. My usual preference is a felt liner but I actually lost my MAC one so I had to deal with this. But I am using my favourite. A brush which is the 210 by MAC and it's so thin and you can just get precision first created a wing liner and then I outlined my cut crease slash crease don't forget to wing it out next I'm going to be taking in my waterline NYX jumbo pencil in milk and just applying that in the waterline as well as heavily blown to kind of create a big eye look because obviously cartoons have big eyes don't forget to line that as well with your gel liner, as well as creating that as kind of a second inner corner, like a wing, and creating a negative space on the outer corner. I also created a little point on my upper lash line. And again, like I said, a felt tip would be so much easier, but I am using the gel liner to create a double tear effect, because a lot of pop art looks have this, especially Royal Lichtenstein's work. Just look at those reference pictures. And then I created some little lashes. As you can see, I drag the brush towards the line. Rather than flick it out. Just creating some little accent lines. Because pop art characters always have this. So they're kind of expressions. And then I'm going to be creating the brow with a brow gel liner. As you can see we're creating a very sharp bold brow. And I also curved out the front because it wouldn't be faded in pop art. It would literally just be like a block of colour. Next I filled in the tears with a white. A white, this is clearly not white, a blue a face paint. And then I filled in that negative space using a liquid liner. This one's from NYX. You also want to use that liner to add some little accents to the tears to make them pop arty and cartoony. As well as creating some on the eye too. 
Don't forget that little gap. And don't forget to highlight that brow bone. Oh my god, I forgot my highlight brick and it just fell out again. The tragedy. I'm going to be using this on my cheekbone and my temple. So going back now to the zombie sad. I'm going to be using a very small brush and that blue face paint. And just outlining all of the more complicated areas and more complex. And then I'll later fill in the rest of it with a bigger brush. Just to, so you get a bit more precision and you don't mess up as much. Just makes your life easier, girl. Look, it's hard looking, but really it's quite easy to achieve. Don't know if I can just say that in general, but that's how I feel about it. <laughs> it was fun to do. To highlight the blue side, I'm going to be taking an iridescent pigment. I'm going to be applying that on my high point. And of course I want to include a little bit of glitter somewhere. I was going to do the whole pink side uh, of my pop art side glitter, but I decided against it instead. So to trace out the mouth, I'm just using a bit of shadow and creating this kind of grid effect anywhere in the mouth sections I want teeth to be. And now I'm going to be taking a pink face paint for the gum, and I'm going to apply that just the tops and the bottom of that section, leaving the middle where the teeth would be clear, so that way the white will be the whitest it can be and not like a weird pinky white teeth. Because no one's teeth are pinky white, that would just be weird, even a zombie. And then the other areas I literally just filled in with pure pink because I'll be shading them in a different way. Now I'm going to be taking a neon pink again, the one we used for the pop-up side. And just highlighting, not highlighting, shading in the areas of pink. And you want to kind of creep it to one side of each shape so you're creating a shadow only on one side of your face and not coming from all different directions. So I'm kind of creating it to the more of the left sides as well as creating it in deeper areas then you want to fill in your lips with a pink liquid lipstick just because they wear the most and this look is quite matte in general so you want to fill in the rest of the lip don't forget to fill in your brow with the pink also i did kind of deepen this up with the shadow later on but i don't think i showed that in my filming don't forget to fill in your eye too i kind of created this like a hollow out effect I think that's the look I was going for. And then I shaded in some kind of crease masks, marks, where it was like a saggy, like droopy eye. As well as creating a shadow underneath. For the teeth, I kind of used a small pencil brush and I focused the white towards the inside of the teeth and then dragged it to like a triangle point. And that way it kind of looks more realistic rather than just being a little square of teeth. It's nice to drag them into a point because that's how your teeth would show if they were exposed. Just like that. Whatever's left of the white you kind of want to use to highlight the pink areas. You don't want it to be a stuck white line. You want it to kind of smoothly transition into the pink. And you kind of create there the top parts. To create a shadow in the mouth, I'm taking a bit of black shadow and applying it between the teeth to in the centre. Just want to buff that out. And then going back to the brain, I'm filling that in. I kind of jump here and there with this video because my thought process is all over the place. But it gets the job done still. Then I line my waterline with the NYX Jumbo Pencil Milk again on my other side. And then for the brain, I shaded where it kind of meets the blue so it seems like it's more sunken in. And then I created those weird squiggly brain lines and shaded below them as well. You want to make everything three-dimensional. And then the opposite to that, I added in light with a bit of white face paint to the highest points, kind of where they split up. These water activates face paints really blend into each other. Now you want to take a black liner and just literally outline everything. For a car scene look, they always have like outlines and expression lines. That's kind of what like a pop art look is. And then you want to create that classic pop art lip by just creating the little creases that naturally form in your lips. You also want to um, apply a little bit more detail to the teeth. And make them a little bit more realistic looking because teeth are never really square. Don't forget to add in your eyebrow and you can see I outlined all the parts of the brain too. And don't forget to do the kind of divide and divide and division, division of both parts. To add a little bit of texture I create these little dotty effects. It's kind of like a little bit of rot or texture. I don't even know what that is. And then create some more expression lines. For example you want to make that cheekbone defined. And you want to do some templing and some kind of creasy expression mix, as well as some creases in the eye as well. 
Now I'm going to be taking the matte dark blue slow mo and applying that to anywhere I think a shadow should sit. So anywhere underneath the lines that we created, anywhere underneath the shapes, in between the mouthpieces, you know, hollowing out the eyes, under the brain, like literally everywhere on the blue section that you want a shadow to be. Don't forget that little septum bit. I think that's the septum bit. No, that's your nose above your lip and you want to create some little white shadows too i did it do did do this to the other sections but i didn't really show it on camera and then i created a dot effect using a pencil and kind of a twisty motion all over that skin part thank you so much for watching this video guys please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you haven't already and if you want to know what my instagram and facebook pages i'll link it down below and everything i use today thank you so much again and i'll see you in my next one Bye.